Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Michael Matt here in Rome on the first day of the pontificate of Pope Francis the I, I guess. And I'm sitting with two very prominent traditionalists, one from Rome, Alberto Carosa, and the other from New York City, Dr. John Rao. We wanted to have just a little bit of a reflection, maybe some commentary on this uh, momentous event, or the very surprise announcement of Pope, Pope Francis's uh, ascending to the chair of St. Peter. Uh, Mr. Caroso, how, how are you? What, what, what's your reaction, first of all, to the well, news? Uh, I was, uh, say, a bit taken off guard in the sense that I, it was something I didn't expect, you know. Mm -hmm. So, because there was, I mean, according to what I wrote on newspapers and media, there was, there was supposed to be uh, some sort of, you know, uh, say, last ditch battle between two candidates in uh, the end. I mean, uh, Cardinal Scola and Cardinal uh, Tudo Sherry from Brazil. So, so yeah, I would say he's an upside, even if he's you know was a challenge of contestant in the last country, you know, with from the poor so that's again. Uh, but nevertheless uh, I was in a reaction on the bit of oh. and then I went, I mean just <laughs> tried to get information, see what was in his profile or his attitude towards some of the issues which I think are perhaps the most crucial issue, first of all, liberty. And according to what I could you know, read, I mean, uh, very quickly, a you know, few sources, uh, he, uh, uh, in his diocese, uh, was a tepid applicant. In a way, he was, I mean, in favor of a tepid application of the multi purpose model I see. So, Do you, uh... but, uh, on the other hand, I saw that he has taken some strong stances against you know, the, the, the support, I mean, so in favor of the so-called Monaco support, you know, which were, mm -hmm. uh, so it's to, uh, some of the strong points of previous uh, predecessor. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that, that this would have been um, Cardinal Sedano's choice? Is this, is this a victory for Cardinal Sedano? Well, that is very hard to say, because it looks to me as some sort of a kind of a compromise. In other words, I mean, Scola was said to be perhaps too much in favor of traditional religion. That's what I happened to what we know. And the other was perhaps too much, you know, so who was still against it? So this perhaps was some sort of a compromise between the two supposed, you know, factions, you know, like inside the country. I couldn't do it, you know, believe that what we see here. Sources, but as I say, uh, perhaps you know, we must uh, just have a uh, wait and see attitude. Mm -hmm. Because if he's I mean, so strong in this non then you know, let's hope and pray that we don't soon also take uh, a similar direction in the liturgy sure, sure. issue. So, um, Dr. Rao, what do you think? Is going through what? What would generally be going through the mind of, of a man who's just assumed this this awesome responsibility? Even even with respect to the issue of gay marriage, when you have even before the conclave began, they were already talking about arresting Pope Benedict XVI for his stand on, on some of these things and for the, the sexual abuse of minors. Is is that going through their, their minds? Is there a certain fear factor? Do you think for for Pope Francis at this point? Uh, quite frankly, as Alberto has just mentioned. I'm so taken aback by what has happened that I can't really even speculate all that well. Uh, did he want this position, having been a candidate last time? Was he, as a potential compromise candidate, someone who had it thrust upon him uh, with perhaps even a little uh, spiritual pressure by arguing that the Holy Spirit required him to take the position? I, I just don't know whether he uh, himself is thought through what it is that he may have to face. Uh, certainly last night in the square, the, um, uh, the uh, appearance, his appearance, indicated something of uh, terror on the part of the new pope. Uh, in fact, uh, his reaction towards the crowd and the crowd's reaction toward him, as I was thinking about it this afternoon, reminded me of uh, a scene from the producers when uh, the crowd watching this play that has taken place, which is uh, is, is, is mad, doesn't quite know how to react to it all. So I, I don't know, I really don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a, um, a blank for me. Mm -hmm. Now, w what can we take from the fact that right now he's having his first Mass in the Sistine Chapel, he is using the crozier of St. Pius IX, Pius IX um, 
there's no there are no women lectresses. Is, is that is, does he have anything to do with that, or is that all put in play by the powers that be for this first mass of his? What do you? Uh, I'm, I don't think that if he is determined to make changes, that any kind of set ritual will be something that he would be worried about. Mm -hmm. So if he if he um, goes by the book, it may be a good sign. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, last night already there were there were certain changes that were that were noticeable in terms of his appearance at the at the balcony. Right. Um, so uh, if he is a committed um, uh, innovator in some way or another, uh, he can ad-lib anything he might want to. Sure. So we'll have to watch him in the days to sure. come. And also see whether Marini will be confirmed or not in his position as a master of ceremonies, mm -hmm. because that puts a unique degree of indication. But right. if he's going to be replaced then, yeah, right. if he's not, then it's another story. So. Do you think it was a slip of the tongue, or, or I, I noticed that he didn't refer to Pope Benedict XVI last night from Eloge, he did not refer to him as Pope, he referred to him as Bishop. Is, is there something... Yes, but I, mean, I think, I think it, it was also I mean, quite emotional, so perhaps... Perhaps I mean, just yes, an oversight. Uh, yes. Sure, sure. You want to read I too much? Uh, yes, I wouldn't read too much. Okay. We're somewhat limited on time, so I want to jump right from this great you know, announcement into your situation here in Rome, because I think that it's a really a source of encouragement for, for Catholics back in the United States to know that there is a strong traditionalist movement right here in Rome. Can you tell me something, and maybe you can chat with John, because I think, John, you're more familiar with their, with their organization as well, about how that works and what you're, what you're trying to accomplish here and how things are going generally. Well, as a lay people, you know, we try to, uh, say, influence public opinion you know, through any possible means, like, say, conferences, publication, booklets, you know, because that's indeed the domain of the to us as lay people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have been receiving, uh, say, lately a lot of encouragement, also because there is a growing interest in tradition and also defense of traditional values, which is also a result in the fact that there is now a, uh, we have now a tradition of parish priest, a parish, parish church, which was uh, established by previous predecessor of the previous pope, and that this acts some sort of a catalyst the center of activities and meeting point and it, that's also, that is also very helpful. Mm -hmm. Let's go, it's going to remain in place and not even you know further promoted and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and increase them in was this was this the, the one that's set up by the fraternity of St. Peter? Mm, yeah, no. Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes, yes, yes. I think I okay, so so I wonder if people are even aware of that back home that, that the Pope himself has yes, pope he Benedict. mandated mm -hmm. the vicar of Rome no? and, uh, at the time he was still Cardinal Arini, I think. To, uh, reserve, to give a parish church traditional symbol. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And that's you know, right. And you know, mm -hmm. as a result of this. So we what what only also only for this we I mean, we're very much in that too. So. With Benedict. Right. Very much. Right. So John, you're familiar with this organization as oh, well? Oh yes, yes, yeah. very much, very yeah. much. And it's uh it's an organization like um, on the web, Rorate Chaley is very determined to make sure that it has a, an objective, measured, uh, studied defense of what it is that we're, 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 we're seeking. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it does very fine work. Mm -hmm. So for example, we also publishing books. This is one, of the, one uh, book of the series on the And this is of the city on the uh, defense of its traditional liturgy and uh, trying to uh, unmask, so to say, the various plots against and opposing the implementation, a proper and correct implementation and so on. Now, for example, some literature like this, how would people get a hold of it? Is there a website that, that they could they could find, order this book and get in touch with you? Yes, we said, yes, but also with the mouth and so on. And also an interest in, you know, because many young people, many youth, I mean, just pop in the church, say, they said, oh, that's so nice, and then they stay, and they know, you believe they know, start to do both, you know, and just for example, and, uh, now, uh, something I could never imagine, my son uh, is also coming to the liturgy, and he has a friend, and all of a sudden I learned that now he's going to catechism in the Green, you know, with Father Kramer. Going to catechism, oh, man, that's, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. <laughs> I'm still have to figure out now what's the, I mean, what's the connection, what you doing? That's the result. So. Right, right. 
Right, and that's that's you know we just can't get away from gratitude toward Benedict for for that uh, that that beautiful reality. That's the same in New York. You have right. the same type of situation there. I think. Right, right, exactly. We've got many places in New York where the mass is is offered. Uh, in fact, uh, it's a, an elegant sufficiency now. Uh, let's hope that it stays mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't believe my, my eyes when I walked into the uh, Basilica of St. Peter's the other morning and there's a traditional Latin Mass going on on the altar of the Transfiguration. It's, uh, every, many of them every morning, I think. Every morning. Every, every morning, many. Every morning, many. That's, that's, that's just amazing. Well, again, we're, we don't have a, a tremendous amount of time, but um, could you give us just... Uh, what do you think is the best approach now? I know there's a lot of uncertainty about Fran Pope Francis. What approach should we take? It's a wait-and-see thing. It's it's yeah. From his first initiatives, you know, let I mean, better knowledge and better I mean, uh, insight as to I mean how to proceed, you know, and, uh, mm -hmm. possibly I mean start initiatives to to uh, mm -hmm. interact with, with him in the sense of you know, the skill, you know, to support. Yeah, because we really don't know. With the grace of office, John, we talked about this right. earlier. You don't exactly. know how, how things might change. Yeah. And we have examples in history. For example, Pius IX. You know, right. He was in head as you know, liberal pope. You know, mm -hmm. in the beginning. Pius IX. Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I guess that's just that the order of the day is just to wait and see, hope for the best, and be confident that he is really strong on the family issues and gay marriage is against all of those things. Exactly. And as I said, pray for him to take the same direction as he's taking for the defense of the negotiables. Like me, take the public stance and be strong against the cannabis and Asia and abortion. So from the point of view, as far as I can see, I mean, this convention is unimpeccable. Let's pay and pay for this convention becoming impeccable also with promote defense and promotion of the Right, That's, that seems to be it, John. I mean, he is, his, the resume is terrific on family issues, and there's a, quite a good-sized question mark over the liturgical. Yeah, uh, that's, I think, all we know up till now. Mm -hmm. That's all we know up And we just have to wait to see about those heads of dicasteries, uh, what's going yes. to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who's going to change, you know, what I mean? to change the queue, I mean, it would, it would, it would, it would be the place or not. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, gentlemen, well, thank you so much for this Thanks. interview, for taking the time to sit with us and share your thoughts. I appreciate it very much. For, my, for the Brendan TV, I'm Michael Matt with John Rao and Alberto Caroso. Thanks very much, and keep praying for the Pope. <laughs>